Francis Scott Key's Star Spangled Banner, written by Monica Culling. Francis Scott Key loved writing poems. He wrote them on horseback. He wrote them late at night. Once, Francis even wrote a poem after a battle. It became America's national anthem. Francis lived in Georgetown, Virginia, near the Potomac River. He and his wife had 11 children. Francis was a lawyer. People came to him with their problems. Francis liked to help. He was always busy. Every morning, Francis read the newspapers. Exciting things were happening in young America. It was now free of England. It was free to make its own laws and to grow in its own way. Trade with France helped America grow. Ships carried wood and cotton to France. They returned with furniture and fashions. Trade with France could be dangerous. England was at war with France and needed more soldiers. British ships followed American ships on the high seas. They took the ships. They forced the sailors to join the English Navy. This made Americans angry. And the anger grew. America wanted to move into the lands west and north. But England held forts in the west. They ruled Canada in the north. America would have to fight England for freedom to gain new land. So in 1812, America declared war on England. Francis joined the reserves. Reserve troops helped regular army troops. Francis helped the troops in northern Maryland. He loaded, fired, and cleaned cannons. But he was slow and clumsy. After ten days, the army sent him home. In the spring of 1813, American troops burned down government buildings in Canada's capital. More than a year later, the English troops struck back. In August 1814, they marched on Washington. They set fires all over the city. They burned down the White House. The British didn't stay for long. They planned to attack Fort McHenry next. Fort McHenry protected Baltimore's harbor. On their march back to their ships, the British troops stopped at Dr. William Beans' house. He had helped them before. But these troops were rude and noisy. They stole from the people in town. Dr. Beans sent someone to get American soldiers. They put the British troops in jail. This action made a British general mad. General Robert Ross sent troops to arrest Dr. Beans. The doctor was now a prisoner of war. But his friends knew what to do. They went to find Francis. Rap, rap, rap. They banged on his door. It was late, but Francis was awake. Dr. Beans is in jail, they shouted. The doctor was Francis's friend. He wanted to help. A few days later, Francis set sail with John Skinner. John was a lawyer, too. Their small ship flew a white flag. The white flag was a sign all sailors knew. It meant they were coming in peace. What if the English did not care about their peace flag? But the English did not open fire. The two men safely boarded the British ship. Francis had letters that were written by English soldiers. The letters said Dr. Beans had helped them when they were hurt. General Ross read the letters. Dr. Beans would be freed. But there was a problem. General Ross would not let the three men leave. They knew too much about the planned attack on Baltimore. Francis's ship was tied to a British ship. The battle began. Cannons roared, rockets burst, the air was black with smoke. The country is lost if the fort falls, said Dr. Beans. We are safe as long as our flag still flies, said Francis. The bombing went on for 25 hours. At dawn, 
all was quiet. Was the flag still flying? Francis looked into a spyglass. There was so much smoke, he could not see the flag. He could not even see the fort. Suddenly, sunlight cut through the smoke and fog. Francis saw the flag. It was flying high above the fort. Baltimore was safe. America was still free. Francis was filled with pride and joy. He sat on a barrel and began to write about the battle. He wrote about how happy he was to see the flag still flying. He wrote about how much he loved his country. Francis's poem was printed in the newspaper. It was set to music. Soon, people across the country were singing it. We still sing it today in schools and at sporting events. The War of 1812 ended in, on February 17, 1815. Francis went back to his quiet life. He continued to help people and to write poems until the end of his life. The commander of Fort McHenry was George Armistead. America's most famous flag stayed with his family for almost a hundred years. Family members cut pieces from the flag to give to special guests. They even cut out one of the stars. Today, you can see the flag that inspired the writing of our national anthem at the Smithsonian Institute in Washington, D.C. The End This Read Aloud has been brought to you by Time to Read to Us. Hit the subscribe button for more kid-friendly read-alouds. Thanks for watching!